Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, this one's gonna be a doozy. I don't know if you saw recently, but Forbes released an article stating that they've decided which fan bases in the NHL are the best. Now, I'm the king of making stupid lists and stupid rankings. I'm the king of the idiots. And this list is stupid. <laughs> it's, it's not really about the list that's stupid. It's about the reasoning. And that's kind of what I, what I want to go through uh, in this video is kind of talk about their reasoning and their, their rules, I guess, in coming up with the answer. Now, I'm not saying I disagree with any of the rankings or uh, anything. I just don't think it's something that you can rank, and I've ranked the most ridiculous things in the world. So uh, let's get into this a little bit. I want to read to you what they said. So I have it on the laptop here, so excuse me for holding this up, but they said, our list of the NHL's best fans is based on fan consumption, fan consumption metrics, hometown crowd reach, television ratings, attendance, secondary market ticket demand, merchandise sales, and social media reach. Now, not all of those are stupid, but some of them are pretty stupid, in my opinion. So I'm gonna kind of break them down a little bit and uh, see what we can see what we can discuss about each one of those topics. But first, I wanna actually read what the rankings were that they gave. So at number 10 is the, is the Detroit Red Wings, number nine, Nashville Predators, number eight, Winnipeg Jets, number seven, St. Louis Blues, Number six, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Number five, the Buffalo Sabres. And here's what they said about Buffalo, which I thought was really interesting. For the third time in four years, the Sabres have the league's best, best TV ratings. Despite missing the playoffs yet again, the team saw a 75% ratings increase on MSG Network last year. That's pretty incredible. I'm going to assume that that statistic is accurate and actually true since Forbes has released it. But if it is true, which I assume it is, like I said, that's pretty impressive for Buffalo and their fans. Uh, number four, the Vegas Golden Knights. Number two, the Chicago Blackhawks. Sorry. Number five, Buffalo. Number four, Vegas Golden Knights. Number three, Chicago Blackhawks. Number two, the Boston Bruins. And here's what they said about Boston. As one of the original six teams, the Bruins have the advantage of having four generations of fans. Their tickets are the second most in demand on secondary markets. So what that means i think is that there's so everyone who's buying boston bruins tickets to see games aren't reselling them because they want to actually go to the game where you have other markets uh, not to pick on toronto but there's a lot of business that's, that's done in toronto and a lot of business at hockey games so if a ticket's bought in toronto and like yeah i don't really care if i go to the game i'll just sell it so there's lots of toronto tickets on the market i don't know if there is or not that's just the example that i'm going to use but in boston if you based on that Everyone who buys a ticket to see a Bruins game actually goes to a Bruins game, so there's not a lot of secondary tickets out there for people to buy, which means the tickets are in high demand, which means good fans. Um, number one, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, like I said, I don't necessarily agree with any of these rankings because I don't, I would never personally, like, I would rank probably everything except this because you just, it's just something you can't quantify. But that's what they did. They tried to quantify it. So let's go through each specific. I don't know, topic that they chose to to try and quantify this. So let's start with number one, attendance. So attendance, should it matter? Well, yeah, of course it should matter, but should it matter to this specifically about best fans? Does high attendance means best fans? No, How like that doesn't even make sense to me. Like in Toronto, oh my God, I'm gonna pick on Toronto lots in this video. In Toronto, if they have, if they're packed, that doesn't mean that they have the best fans because it's packed. There's a lot of business done in Toronto. Like I said earlier in the video, uh, it's because in Florida where they only draw 9,000 people a game or 10,000 or whatever it is, it doesn't mean that the doesn't mean that the fans within the arena who love the team, and I'm not I'm sure not all of them love the team, but the ones that are there, the hardcore fans in Florida, do you think they're any less hardcore than the ones in Toronto? Probably not. So how do you how do you quantify? the best fans based on attendance. That's not really indicative of fan quality. That's There's so many factors that go into that. There's so many factors. So it, I just, I think that's a real silly topic or heading or I don't know, whatever you want to call these. Uh, I just think this is just a real silly one. So yeah, I'm not a fan of that one. Number two, secondary market ticket demand. So I already kind of talked about this one with Boston, but to me, this one actually does make sense in a way. Uh, the more 
fans that want to go to the game with their original ticket, the less secondary tickets there are in the market, which means there's not enough tickets available for the people, other people who really want to go. So to me, that does kind of equate to a really awesome fan base because uh, anyone who does buy the ticket doesn't want to give it up. They're the hardcore fan, right? They're not going to give up a ticket. I'm not giving up a ticket to go to, to miss a game. I'm going to go to this game because I bought a ticket because I freaking love this team. So yeah, that makes sense to me. Number three. Hometown crowd reach. Uh, is this population based? I don't quite understand. Just because in New York City, there are more people within the surrounding areas of the arena or the city itself uh, within the metropolitan area. Does it mean that they have better fans than Vegas because it's a little bit more spread out in Vegas and fans might live a little bit further away from the arena or from within right downtown. Like how does this work? What, how does home, like what is hometown reach? Like, is it based on population? Is it based on radius? Like what the hell is hometown reach? Like, I'm not saying I disagree with it, but I'm saying what the hell is it? Like, tell us, don't just make a topic and then don't tell us what exactly it means. Like we want to know what it means. If we're going to understand your list and we're going to look at your list, tell us what it freaking means, right? Heck yeah. Number four, television ratings. Yeah, you see, again, for this one, I don't really agree because television ratings are important. Don't get me wrong. They're incredibly important, but I've been watching a lot of Minnesota lately. I'm not a Minnesota fan. I've just been watching them because I, I'm enjoying seeing how they're playing hockey right now. So does that mean that other people are watching Minnesota or Vegas, for example, in the first year that they were in, there were lots of people w outside of the hometown reach watching them from the outside looking in. Does that mean that they're Vegas Golden Knights fans? No, probably not. So how do you weave through the digital list of, of TV ratings to say, oh, well, you, you can't cherry pick out of this list and say, well, that person's from New Brunswick. He's not He's not actually a Minnesota Wild fan. That person's from Russia. That's not a Minnesota fan. Like, how do you know who's watching your game if they're who who they cheer for? Like, I just think like TV ratings are important. Yes. Do they mean everything? No. Should they be on this list? No. In my in my opinion, this is kind of a silly thing. Number five, merchandise sales. Okay, I agree with this one in a way, but when you have people like me who are obsessed with jerseys like I have a jersey for every single NHL team I have 90 jerseys total I have a Pittsburgh Penguins jersey am I am I a Pittsburgh Penguins fan heck no I have a Chicago I have I have four Chicago Blackhawks jerseys am I a Chicago Blackhawks fan heck no I like half of their jerseys that I have I love one it doesn't mean that I'm a Chicago Blackhawks fan so while I agree that yeah like merchandise sales do matter in a way uh, there, like, there's so many people collecting now. There's so many. Like, there's jerseys, or there's jerseys. There's channels on YouTube literally dedicated to collecting jerseys. That's it. They don't talk about anything else. They don't give opinions on anything else. It's just jerseys. And there's hundreds and thousands of people who watch, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who watch these videos. So I don't necessarily agree. Like, I'm kind of 50-50 for this one. I, I, I understand it, but you, there's the other 50% that just kind of doesn't make sense because there are so many people who collect jerseys and that doesn't always equate to them being a fan. So kind of on the fence with this one. Number six, social media reach. Much like the last one, kind of 50-50 on this one. Social media means a lot, don't get me wrong, but you have, you have team, let's use Vegas, for example. The Vegas Twitter is amazing. Funny, comical, the San Jose one as well is a really good, uh, Twitter. They're, they post all kinds of awesome stuff. There are fans of other teams who follow those Twitter uh, accounts. Like, think of what the rivalry between Vegas and San Jose. You think that there's not San Jose fans following the Vegas uh, Twitter? Because, yeah, they want to see what's going on. They want to see the digital chirps, so to speak. And there's going to be Vegas fans following the San Jose Twitter to chirp back. Like, it's that that's how it works. I am following all 31 teams on social media, soon to be 32. Doesn't mean I'm a fan of them. Like, so I, while I understand the social media reach, you can't really equate that to best fans. Like it just, it just doesn't really make sense. And that's what this whole thing is about. You want to make a list 
fine, whatever. I applaud you for being bold enough to make a list, something that I wouldn't do. I'm not, I'm not that bold to make this specific list. I make a lot of other stupid lists, but uh, this isn't one of them. But uh, there's two things. Number one, which I've already said, this is stupid. Number two, give us the data. Give whatever data you used, release it. Let's see it. How many decision makers were there? Was there just one guy in an office looking at all this data, trying to figure it out? Was there a team of five? Was it a collective thing of like 100 or 200 people within Forbes, all doing polls and trying to look at the data and be like, oh, well, this is more important than this and whatever. What kind of value were each of these topics given? Was Jersey sales way up here, but social media reach was down here? Like, how, give us the data. That's what I say, but anyways, Basically, this is dumb, so, and kind of dumb that I'm even making a video about it, but whatever. Uh, I figured you guys would uh, like this, maybe just to go through this, because I, th I know that there's other people who feel the exact same way as me. I've already had conversations with those people, and people I don't even know. People on Twitter that I don't even know were having the same conversations, saying the, saying the same things, having the same views, so I can't imagine there's other people out there watching this video who have maybe never seen my videos before who hopefully feel the same way. So uh, thanks guys and girls for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, not subscribed to this channel, uh, I hope you can hit the subscribe button. I just recently released a video, a contest announcement on the main channel, post to post, and the winner is going to be announced on this channel. So if you are not following the, the main channel, go follow that channel or go subscribe to that channel and uh, ch check out the contest video. And if you want to uh, partake in that, that would be awesome. I'd love it if you could partake in that. The deadline is February 17th. So yeah, it'd be cool to see your designs. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I hope you're having a good day. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.